How am I going to feed my kids? Are we definitely going to be coming back? Are you going to pay for our flights home? Are we going to be able to get home? Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy and today I'm going to be telling you my experience of being sent home from Virgin Voyages in March. But before we start, I just want to remind you to click like and subscribe for more cruise ship content. And if you have anything in particular that you would like me to cover, then you can let me know in the comments or you can DM me on Instagram at Cruising as Crew. But as for now, let's get into today's video. So Virgin Voyages was meant to be launching their new ship, the Scarlet Lady, in April of 2020, this year. And there was so much excitement around Virgin Voyages and the change that it was gonna bring to the cruise industry. Little did we know there was another big change coming to the cruise industry. When I was on board, along with everyone else, I was so excited to be there. There was a real sense of like a belonging, everyone felt that they were a part of something amazing that was happening. And everyone was just stoked to be there. So I flew to Genoa in January to start working for Virgin Voyages, but the cruise ship wasn't quite ready to live on. So a lot of us lived on a ferry that was literally right next to the cruise ship while the Scarlet Lady was being finished. So for the first like, I think it was two weeks, we were just immersed in virgin voyages you know and it was amazing we got to meet everyone they did loads of like team building activities with all the crew members it wasn't just between one department they did like crew bingo and crew basketball and there were like loads of activities that people could join in on and then during the day we all took part in classes so we were learning about the virgin voyages company policies we were learning about safety procedures learning what to do in case of a fire learning about learning about everything that you need to learn about. And anyone who has worked on ships knows that there is a lot of training involved when you first get on board. If you triple that amount of training, yeah. Because it's a brand new company, so there was a lot to learn. And Virgin Voyages is gonna be in the spotlight because it's a new cruise line, so everyone needs to know their stuff. So after about like two weeks, um, people were able to move over onto Scarlet. So we moved all our stuff over onto the cruise ship and we, we got given our new little cabins, which was amazing, so we could really start making ourselves at home. So I hung my little fairy lights up and got fully unpacked because I was gonna be there for seven months little did I know. So when everyone had moved on board, that's when we really started work on the actual shop. So I work in the shops department. So every day we would go to the shops on the Scarlet Lady and we would be like putting fixtures in, doing a lot of dusting because obviously building work so there was just dust everywhere and just basically getting the shops ready for a stock delivery and that's what everyone was doing really and then the delivery started coming for every department so you have to check off all the stock and put it in the right place get it to all the stock rooms and you know people said to me before virgin they were like do you really want to do a ship setup like have you ever done one before it's really hard and i was like no like it'll be fine i know it's going to be hard work but I'm ready for it. And I was ready for it, but oh my god, it was hard work. But all all ship setups are. But yeah, long days. But anyway, we're getting off topic. Being sent home from Virgin. Because it's a new ship, a lot of the TVs that were in the crew cabins weren't actually working yet. So the only TVs that were working on the ship were in the crew mess. And those TVs are always on mute or Maybe they're not on mute, but because everyone's talking so loud, you can't hear them. So the only time that you would kind of see what was going on in the outside world on the TV was when you were having lunch, which is about half an hour a day. And we saw coronavirus because it was the news channel, but everyone was like, oh, you know, it's just something that's happening in China, how wrong we were. Because when, we, when you're on a ship, you are really in a bubble. You know, you, we had no real access to the outside world other than the TV at lunchtime and calling our loved ones. My mom and friends had mentioned coronavirus, but none of us really grasped how serious it was. So anyway, six weeks of like setting up the shops. We had just finished the 10 day crossing from Liverpool to Miami. And by that point, the crew was starting to grasp how serious it was because the ship was originally meant to go from Liverpool to New York, but we had to change because obviously New York had had that horrific outbreak of COVID, so we went to Miami instead. And also by this point, we had heard about the Diamond Princess that had had an outbreak of COVID-19 on board. So from that, we were like, okay, you know, this is a little bit more serious than we thought, but honestly, still didn't think it was going to affect the Scarlet Lady or any other cruise ship. I just thought, 
it was an unfortunate incident. But then I think it was on like the 20th of March, everyone got called to the manor, which is kind of like the theater on most cruise ships for an all crew meeting. You usually know that they're gonna happen like a week before on any other cruise ship that I've been on, you know it's coming. Whereas this all crew meeting had been organized the night before and we found out that morning that that afternoon we were gonna have an all crew meeting. So it was very spontaneous. Around that time was when we had nearly finished getting everything ready for passengers. The day the all crew meeting happened was like the same day that I finished we finished putting everything in my shop and for a lot of departments around that time was when they had finished everything so a lot of people were thinking oh it's an all crew meeting to like congratulate us on finishing the work and working so hard and of course there were people like we're gonna get sent home because of the coronavirus but me and a lot of others being naive were telling people like don't be silly we're not gonna get sent home how silly was I I managed to get in the manor where Tom McAlpin was going to be giving the meeting and then the meeting was actually broadcast throughout the ship so as long as you were stood in front of a TV they were all working by this point then you could see what he was saying. All the crew members were gathered and just waiting really anxiously to see what he had to say and the energy in the room was buzzing like everyone was everyone seemed really excited because we were just not expecting the news that we got. So, you know, he started the meeting by saying, you know, thank you, you've worked so hard, you're amazing. So we had this maybe like five minute to 10 minute speech about how well we've done and how proud he is. And you know when someone tells you something good, but then they're like, but it was that, you know, it was, he was saying all the right things, but you had just knew there was a but coming. <laughs> oh, and it came. So then he was like, you know, due to, the outbreak of COVID and what's happened in New York and what's happened to the Diamond Princess and blah, blah, blah. You're all going on an early vacation. He didn't obviously say it quite like that. I can't remember his exact words. It was awful. It was awful. I mean, like I said, the energy was really alive before he started speaking. And then as soon as he dropped that bombshell, silence. I mean, you could hear a pin drop. Everyone was gobsmacked even the people that had been like speculating that we were going to be sent home were gobsmacked because no one was actually expecting it so it was just like what this what tom McAlpin, who's the ceo of virgin voyages was going through what was going to happen and how things were going to work and then he let people ask questions after he started speaking and that was really heartbreaking because Obviously there were people who were asking like, okay, well, are we gonna get paid when we get home? Like, how am I gonna feed my kids? Are you gonna support us? Are we definitely gonna be coming back? Are you gonna pay for our flights home? Are we gonna be able to get home? Wouldn't it be safer for us to stay on the ship? And there's a few people that had like sold everything to come and work on this cruise ship. So they were like, I have nowhere to go. I was supposed to be here for six months. Like I've sold my flat, I've sold my car, I've sold, my life that was really heartbreaking just seeing the panic i was in a very fortunate position in that my parents are quite happy for me to stay with them so i was like i'm good you know i'm, I'm okay but yeah just uh, the panic and the devastation and you know people were crying because as well as it being a shock like we had all worked so incredibly hard to get this ship to this standard in this amount of time that it was just like was it all for nothing and no it wasn't all for nothing because we will be going back but at the time it was just like oh my god what the hell so after the meeting with tom McAlpin, everyone divided into their department so like the shops department went and had a meeting with our manager and i assume every other department had a meeting with their manager in which we could ask our questions and there was a lot of questions because it was just massive like uncertainty and I think that was the scariest thing is and still is the scariest thing no one knows what's gonna happen like even now five months later I still don't know what's gonna happen with Virgin or any cruise line so it's terrifying and it was so terrifying then but actually I didn't think it was going to be as big of a deal as it was and I know like I'm not alone when I say that I know there's a lot of people who were thinking it was just gonna be 
a three month thing and after the meeting with Tom McAlpin that's when people started to fly home some people actually got flown home the next day the company knew more than we did about borders that were going to close so they were like get everyone home some people were leaving the next day I actually got my flight details like a week later so I had a week to try and process everything and get my shit together literally most of the shop staff got sent home on the same day so we all pretty much went home a week later and we flew from Miami well back to wherever we were so for me England and the flight home was once again we had been on the ship for two months we got off a few times but not very much so to go from being on the ship to going to the airport where people were wearing masks Obviously that's like a normal thing now, but back then I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. People were wearing visors. There was, in the um, Miami airport, I mean, there were people with like full body suits. I mean, the masks that people had created, like these visors, and I remember seeing one guy and he, he'd actually made a mask out of a milk bottle, which, anyway, you could just tell it was a milk bottle. But it was really strange to go from being on Virgin Voyages where there are no masks because obviously no one on board had COVID-19, so there was no need for anything like that, to going to the airport where everyone's wearing all this PPE and it's like, oh shit, this is, this is serious. And I know, like being sent home from your job should have been enough to make you realize it was serious, but sometimes it's the other things that make you realize. And for me, it was going to Miami airport and seeing all these people wearing PPE and I was like, oh, <laughs> right, definitely underestimated this. But anyway, so flew home, got home safely, very, very lucky. It was just a massive, massive adjustment and it was for everyone who was on any cruise ship and Virgin Voyages because obviously working on a cruise ship, you're working a million miles an hour pretty much every day. So to then come home into lockdown, which someone's literally slamming the brakes on and you're going from a thousand miles to zero miles an hour. I mean, I came home and there was nothing to do. Couldn't leave the house, couldn't. So it was intense and I definitely felt low for a while. I mean, who didn't feel low for a while? Because it was just the uncertainty, what's gonna happen? Oh my God, I've just been sent home from my job. I have nothing to do. What am I gonna do? Really, really, really shitty. And I consider myself to have been in a really good situation. Like I didn't have to organize anything. I just kind of called my parents up and was like, I'm coming home, which, wonderfully they were relieved about because they were like well you know we'd rather you be home in this kind of situation so i can only imagine how stressful it was for people who had to organize where they're going to stay who they're going to stay with what they're going to do what they're going to do for money so yeah being sent home from virgin voyages was really really emotional but we were so excited about launching that ship and still are so excited about it but for it to come to a halt like that was a real a real shocker a real real shocker and for everyone you know who went through a similar experience i.e you were on a cruise ship and had to come home i hope that you're okay and that you're not putting too much pressure on yourself like i know a lot of us went into lockdown we were like right well we better come out of this better than we went in you know i better have learned a whole language by the time that i get out of this or i better have learned the guitar but i think just adapting to the situation is enough. And I should really learn to take my own advice because I put too much pressure on myself constantly. But just getting to grips with how your life changed, you know, like if you are, if you were on a cruise ship, going from the amount that you work on board to then coming home and probably not having anything to do, it's a huge adjustment. So just getting through that and staying sane like you've done well you've done really well that's what i'm telling myself anyway i hope you have enjoyed this video i hope you are staying safe i hope you are happy i hope you are healthy and i also hope you are really enjoying these videos and if you are please press subscribe and the notification button because i have a lot more coming your way but while you wait for them you can check out these two videos here or check out the ones i have linked below in the description box but i hope you have a marvelous day and i will see you in the next video